So over the weekend, they updated a new version of uh, Invoice Ninja. And a lot of you I know are like myself and want to run the self-hosted version. So this is a concern for you for how do you do the updates on it. And they've actually made it easier and it's getting even better. Uh, upcoming features in a roadmap is going to be a way to completely automate to do it. Um, if this is daunting for you, uh, you can always use their self-hosted version, which will they keep up to date so you don't have to really worry about this. That being said, I'm going to show you how I update our system and how the update works. Now, if you go over here uh, to their page under the docs and type in update, and that's all I did so you can find it real quick. They have a link to a shell script, which is right here that you can set up and configure. You've changed a few parameters uh, where your home is version um, and don't do like I did. Uh, please note it says works with uh, update and lines 51, 54, and 79. Um, important, be sure to edit lines 17 and 18 to make sure they match the storage. Read through this, that's all, uh, to make sure that this is right. I still found one more thing for my particular installation. I had to change. It was the way it was, uh, I forgot what it was now. It doesn't matter. I changed it and fixed it, but they're working on this being there. And it's, if you're not familiar with running uh, Bash, then this may not be for you. But you can pretty go, much go through here, and it's pretty straightforward. All you have to do if you weren't using this automated script is download the code, drop it over the code, and then log into the Invoice Ninja system and go ahead and uh, run the update. And I'm going to walk through the process real quick and show you how it updates. Now, backup, backup, backup. Uh, anytime you want to run the self-hosted, you should be running the server if you have this publicly exposed, completely secure, up to date, patched, and have backups of everything, the data, uh, and everything related to it. Uh, that's super easy for me because I have it in a, a virtual machine dedicated just to Invoice Ninja. So I just create a snapshot each time I do something, and I always keep a couple snapshots anyways. So I just snapshot it again uh, before this update. So I know that if everything goes completely wrong, <laughs> that I have a way to roll it back. Other side note, part of my process for updating this, I remove the ability for remote access. Um, I do that because I want to lock it down. Now, if you're hosting this in, in some other place on a uh, in an Amazon web service or whatever, cloud host the service, you don't have an internal stack, maybe you just want to set the firewall to filter so only your IP address can access it. What you don't want is anyone logging in, making a payment, uh, which you want people making payments, but you don't necessarily want to do it while you're in the middle of an update. You don't want to cause an issue. So I've already stopped any access. Plus, uh, some of my staff does not work from inside the office. And I, I sent the message in Slack that we're doing an update right now. But in case they tried to log in and start inputting data, they can't. I don't want something to get messed up. So just a couple things to think of if you're running the self-hosted one. And like I said, if you don't want to think of anything, have them host it for you. That's what they do. <laughs> so now, uh, without further ado, let's jump into the update here and show you how that works. All right, and I have the not so cleverly named uh, Invoice Ninja Automatic Update Script 4.6.3. Um, I know they do suggest running in a cron job, but kind of like for the reasons I just mentioned, I like to run it in a very controlled, I back up first. I've done now a couple updates because there's been two, and this will be, the, I think, the third bump since I started using the system, and so far nothing's gone wrong. So we're going to watch this in real time and see if anything goes wrong here. So it's going to go in, it does a comparison to my version of Invoice Ninja versus the Invoice uh, Ninja version on invoiceninja.org. It does a comparison, mine was at 421, 422 was uh, released, I think yesterday. Yesterday or Sunday, I think I seen it in GitHub on Sunday and, well, anyways, it's on the website now. So it first thing it does, goes out, downloads it, and it's gonna unzip that to a temp directory, extracting it, and then it's going to do a sync to copy all the files back over and then run the update. Now, the way Invoice Ninja works on the back end is it's going to go and put in uh, all the changes. Now, they create a folder for updates as well in terms of database updates. So when it's all done, it's going to run, and I got stuff blurred out here, I know, uh, but it actually runs the migration command, your invoice portal URL name, index.php slash update when it's all done. So that kind of kicks off the update process. And what that does is in the case there was any database changes, it will execute those as well. And it kind of finishes the cleanup of the updates, but that's it, script runs, and uh, I can log back into the system now. Now, once you log in, you're going to see successfully completed updates, see what's new in 422. Once you log in, once this goes away, and we scroll down to the bottom here, and it says powered by Invoice Ninja 422. 
that's it. That's all you have to do to do the update. Like I said, it's really straightforward, really simple. Uh, they have a pretty clear process on it uh, for going in here and making and getting the system up and going. So uh, that's really it. And one other thing I will while I'm in here, because a few people have asked, what's the server you're running this on? How fast is it? Well, let's pull that up real quick while we're here. Oh, sorry, I had to blur everything out too for those wondering. Uh, you can't see all my client information. That's confidential. All right, so I wanted to answer some other questions people had about Invoice Ninja here, kind of to wrap this up. And so what does it run on? First, I've got it, four cores dedicated to it, two gigs of RAM. It's a older Xeon X5670 at 2.93 gigahertz. Nothing outstanding here, nothing absolutely incredibly fast. But how fast does it do lookups for clients? And I just booted it, so not thing, things are not really uh, cached yet. So let's find uh, some client lookups and we'll watch these tables as I do some of the queries in here. So here's a client, pulls them up really fast. Uh, this client has uh, not that many invoices, but you can see the queries over here. By the way, you notice the system's not even stressed for this. I'm trying to think of a client that has a lot of invoices. Uh, let's try this one here. Yeah, it, it, the system has these tiny little peaks. Uh, it's wicked fast. It's indexed. I have over 6,000 clients in here. We imported only about, because we just didn't care about some of the stuff. So with some filtering, I think we have like, I don't know, 9,000 invoices in here, uh, but still not a bad amount of them. We had more in our old system. We just, the, the filtering I had to do to get the invoices in because of the way my old system was made it tricky. But you can see here when I pull up some clients, it's like instant. We, you get these tiny little peaks. It blips the processor. Now, I have four cores. We have four technicians. Uh, and it still has not, with all of us using it, maybe well, five of us, no, six of us use it at the same time the other day. I was playing with it. It Nothing pauses. It's absolutely, uh, it's fast. That's a nice thing about the system. I think they've done a good job in the back end doing all the coding because it's solid. Uh, the performance is really good. Um, I don't know the specs of their self-hosted system. I'm sure it's pretty fast. But when I, if you notice when I did the demos and playing around with it, it was really quite fast. Uh, didn't really have any problems with it. But even after you use it and it builds the cache back up, so it, at reboot, it's using like 340 megs. When we run it a while, I think it gets a little over, somewhere between four and 500 um, as we look up stuff. It's just not... Uh, it's not processor intensive. That's the best way to describe it. It just works. So as I'm jumping through real fast here, popping in and out of invoices, you're seeing the queries, but uh, just not much, not much here in terms of uh, processor power. So hopefully that answers that question for those of you wondering, is it resource intensive on a processor? Not at all. Uh, matter of fact, it's really, really lightweight. And that's been kind of nice because we were worried, you know, part of our testing before we even moved production to this was loading up all the clients in it to see how it would handle. Did it bog down? We're at, uh, I'll tell you exactly how many clients we have. As of today, we have 6,360 uh, 6, clients in the system. So that is our right now client count as of March and it's flipping through them no problem at all. So it's uh, definitely optimized. That means it's plenty expandable. I'm sure there's plenty of people out there to have even more clients than us than these. Uh, so if that sets your heart at ease in case you're wondering about scalability of it. I don't know what the upper limit is, uh, but certainly it has no problem at all running on an older processor <laughs> with 6,000. So it seems pretty well optimized. All right, thanks for watching. Hopefully you found this uh, information uh, useful, like and subscribe. Uh, if you're interested in signing up for Invoice Ninja, like I said, I got the links below on there. Uh, go ahead and set up a free account and play with it. Have them host it. And if you're feeling uh, that you're up to the task of locking everything down and maintaining all these updates I just talked about, then you can host it yourself as well. That's definitely an option.